What's up guys? Once again, back at the shop, putting in some work on the old Civic. Um, get right into this thing. Welcome to the auto shop life. Gonna mate this uh, trans to the engine. Check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right guys, so another week has came and gone, putting in some work on the Civic. Um, I've been busy, I've, I've been busy on it. We're getting a lot of stuff done on it. Um, gonna do this video about uh, how to put a clutch in. You know, we got, uh, I got a uh, stage three clutch off eBay. Um, seems pretty good for the most part, I'll try to, uh, I'll try if it's a if it's a name a brand I'll try to put the brand down in the description but for the most part it seems good we could always uh, upgrade in the future but to show you guys kind of where I'm at with everything you guys can see I got the motor hanging um, that's where I'm at with the motor you guys can see I got it all protected I still got to pull the valve cover back off and uh, you know weld in some uh, some bongs for the uh, the crank waste for the oil catch can I got set up. You can see I got the drain back down here. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to go with this uh, oil feed sandwich or if, if I'm going to just do something with the oil pressure switch. But that's kind of what we're looking at. We're still waiting on a couple more parts before we actually get this thing in there. But, you know, got to get the trans all set. Got to get the flywheel on, pressure plate. The kit was a pretty nice kit. Came with, uh, obviously, a new pilot bearing, lineup tool. Um, Here's the clutch itself. Not much material on it, but you know, definitely cool looking. There's a pressure plate, obviously got it in red. So it's pretty much everything we're gonna need right here to get the job done. So what the trans turned out looking like. Keeping it clean, maybe keeping uh, you know, keeping the red theme going, not too much, but uh, you know, just enough to kind of, you know, for my taste, put my little pizzazz on there. I think it's turning out nice. This kit did come with a new flywheel. Um, the one on there definitely looked pretty beat up. So we're gonna get the camera set up and uh, get this on here. Got new seals, new axle seals, Honda part numbers. You can see these are there are left and right there. But pretty much get started on this. You know, I gotta uh, I gotta thank every you know all you guys. You guys, uh, you got you guys' feedback on this build. You know, has kept me going on it. It's a lot of work. It definitely is. You know, I've been putting in work here and there and where I can, but uh, you know, you guys, you guys giving me, you know, the inspiration and the help. So like I said, guys, really appreciate the feedback and all the help and the great, you know, the kind words. You know, to me, I, I think it's turning out well too. Um, you know, big shout out to you guys. Definitely got to give a shout out to uh, Britton Kamen. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll put the, his link up at the top somewhere, but He's got a pretty cool Del Sol, couple tool review videos and things like that. You guys go over there, head over there, check them out. But, uh, you know, he's done this build. You know, I've done a few, but, you know, as far as what's good, what's not, and all that stuff, it, you know, it, it's, not like, it's not like I build these all day long or I've built two, three of them or have one at least now. So, you know, making the right moves, you know, asking around, you guys got any questions or anything like that, you know, leave them down in the comments. You know, I'll try to answer them or uh, at least find the information for you guys because, you know, I'm going through the same thing. I don't want to, you know, spend all this time and money on something that's going to fail. That's why I haven't bought the turbo yet. I haven't really decided where I'm going to go with that or what turbo brand or type. I got some ideas, you know, I still, I still would rather do an eBay one, like I said, for what comes in the kit, and then just upgrade, you know, the crappy parts from there. But go ahead and get you guys set up. We're gonna get this uh, bad boy mounted to that one, and uh, show you guys how I do it. So check it out. So I know this thing looks a little funny with all this packing and tape on there, but you know, I just wanna try to protect the paint and all that. I'll probably have to repaint it anyways, but you know, always protect your work, you know, stay clean, all that stuff, prep for it. You see, I got everything laid out here that we're going to be using. But first off, we're going to get this flywheel on here. Um, so I do use Loctite. I got some stuff here from Harbor Freight. You know, nothing too crazy. This one's a medium strength. Um, just a dab. A little dab will do you. You know, nothing crazy. Just, you know, if they're torqued properly, you got nothing to worry about. More or less, I put this on there for reassurance, vibration, things like that. You know, I do not want one of those bolts to come loose and 
end up into the clutch and everything else. So, you know, a little bit won't hurt. So got that. These bolts are 12 point. So you want to make sure, you know, the flywheel to the crank is 17 millimeter. Make sure you use a 12 point. And then you got the 12 point 10 millimeter for the pressure plate. Get into it. Show you guys how we do it. Just like that. Nothing too crazy. Get the first one started here. Now this flywheel goes on any way. You want to make sure before you install it, you know, get your pilot bearing set in there real nice. It goes on to the backside. Some of them, you know, only go on one way, but these bolts, there's eight bolts and they all pretty much just line up. So get them lined up. All right, now that we got two in there, it's where it's going to be. We'll go ahead and just uh, put Loctite on all these fasteners real quick so we can kind of just get them in there, snug them up, and then torque them down. So got them all in there. Basically, you take your uh, 17 millimeter. We're using the, those Tectins I picked up. Been pretty good socket for the most part. You know, I'm not going crazy on this thing, these things, but uh, they definitely hold up well. They snap on pretty good. They haven't worn down. Just want to snug them down and you want to do this in sequence. So I'll do this first one, then cross over, then cross over and just keep crossing over so it goes on evenly. Not too tight because I'm going to retorque this to the right spec. cardboard so it doesn't scratch up the new pan. I don't have a lockdown tool like I said so I'll try to use this screwdriver and see if we can get these torqued down in sequence. So got the flywheel torqued down, kind of a pain to do, but we got it done. Torqued to all of them in sequence to 87. Got that all tight. Now pretty much from here, you'll grab the actual friction, the clutch. You can see, you know, one side has the spring sticking out, the other side's flat. Uh, springs always face out. So we'll go to line this up. This end locks into the teeth. And then you got the little tapered end here. We're we'll going to the pilot bearing, and that'll keep you aligned while you install the pressure plate. I have to make sure it's seated all the way in there. There we go, nice and straight. Then we'll grab the pressure plate. And this one has a couple pins. This flywheel's got a couple pins on there, so we'll want to just line up the pins. And then this also gets tightened in sequence. See a little sticker on there. It says uh, XTD. Like I said, if I got a partner for this, guys, I'll leave it down in the description. Get everything lined up. Make sure your clutch stays lined up. binding yet and I'll go ahead and just uh, snug these down with the 12.10 uh, millimeter get a little extension so I'll start with the bottom one here until it starts to go in go to the top one and then just continue on keep crossing over until it's all the way in the pins will line up Alright, so got the pressure plate pretty much ran down. You pretty much just want to keep going in sequence, you know, until the fingers start to push in and everything is, is kind of seated where it needs to be. We're going to go ahead and try to pull this one off with the uh, 3 8 tech angle. These, uh, these torque wrenches are my go-tos. I really dig these. Snap-on's got, uh, I got to do, a, I do another review on these. You guys let me know down in the comments if you want me to do a long-term review on these ones, but they've been great, holding up great. 
Definitely accurate. Uh, these you want to torque to what, 24. So we're going to see if we can pull this off. It's just hanging here. Um, grab the socket. So got them all torqued down. You go ahead and, uh, you know, as long as everything's straight, you go ahead and pull the alignment tool out. And we'll go ahead and get, uh, get it set up to uh, get the trans on here. Sometimes you just gotta go at it however you can to get it done. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap this one up here. Pretty much, uh, it was a little rough by myself getting those uh, getting those two married together. You know, getting the trans and the motor made it together. But you know, whatever it takes. I tried using the trans jack, but you know, with one guy not being able to you know angle the engine and all that stuff on the pick, I just couldn't get it lined up. So I had to drop it to the ground and uh, you know get that uh, shaft to line up into the clutch. So. That's what she's looking like. I got her back on the table here. I got a few more things to do on it. Still got the, uh, you know, racing uh, harmonic balancer and uh, alternator pulley. Why not? I'm only running one belt. Um, a few other little things, some gaskets. I got the Skunk 2 uh, Pro Series intake. You guys can see at the bottom there. I also got the 70 millimeter Skunk 2 throttle body. I'm gonna go with the, uh, four bar map sensor. I'm not really sure I'm looking at it. I think I ordered a few things already. Can't really, uh, can't really remember. I got a bunch more coming, you know, radiator hoses. We're gonna go ahead and uh, make our own harness. We're gonna go ahead and do a wire tuck, but instead of, uh, instead of buying one, we're gonna go ahead and just make our own. So we'll do a video on that. I'll show you guys how to take care of that. You know, it, it's only wires, it's only electrical stuff. Why pay 500 and something dollars for a wire tuck when I got wires here everything else solder whatever i got to do deep in it so as soon as we get it in figure out where the wires are going to go we can cut them back lengthen them do whatever we got to do with them also getting uh probably the as far as the injection goes we're going with an aem fuel rail tucked k2 and tucked fuel rail so we'll cut back this fuel line here obviously you know no fuel filter bolted to the firewall it'll be in line went with some bosch high impedance thousand cc injectors so those should be coming soon. We'll get the fuel taken care of. I'll probably get it in the car before uh, that stuff gets here because we could always take care of that stuff, you know, once it's installed, you know, once we get this uh, engine hanging back in under the hood. But uh, that's where we're at, guys. I'm going to go ahead and probably knock out these seals real quick before I leave today. You know, obviously just uh, I got these capped off when I painted it, but pop those old seals out, drive the new ones in. This thing will be ready to... Uh, pretty much hang you know I'll try to get a video of me putting it in there you know it's always nice to uh, <laughs> I guess watch me struggle you know maybe maybe you guys out there doing these jobs on your own you can see you know my little tips 
of taking care of things on your own. Uh, not that I like to, because you know, safety first. You know, that engine falls on my leg or something like that. I can't get to my phone, or you know, there's not another guy for help. But you know, always be careful working by yourself. You know, obviously, if you're using jacks, you know, safety first. Um, it is what it is. You know, this is my only day to pretty much work on this as much as I want. I wanted to shoot a video for you guys, get this clutch in here, get this thing pretty much ready to go because we're moving right along, guys. Um, next on the thing, we're gonna. Definitely start thinking hard what we're gonna, what kind of turbo we're gonna go with this thing. Um, like I said, guys, big shout out to you guys, you know, helping me out. You guys got any uh, suggestion as far as turbo goes, you know, leave it down in the comments. I'm trying to stay, you know, under 2000, maybe for a kit. I don't wanna go crazy on this, you know, I probably feel like I'm already over what I originally planned, you know, doing forged rods and everything like that. It, you know, I wasn't gonna do that at first, but if you're gonna do something, do it the best of your ability, you know, do it right the first time because I don't want to, I don't want to break down this short block again. You know, I don't mind pulling ahead or changing the turbo and all that stuff while it's in there, but I did not want to, you know, pull that crank back out of here. So, but this is where we're at, guys. Everything looking good. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, seals put in here, strap this thing to the lunch lady cart again, and this is what it looks like coming off. I'll try to put a picture on the screen what this thing looked like you know, sitting, sitting on here before. There's before, and here's after. Got everything all cleaned up, painted. Like I said, we're gonna be pulling this back off. I might do a couple more coats, but I will be doing the, uh, the vented valve cover for the catch can. You guys can see the catch can. I got the clean injection, battery located one, so I kinda got it just sitting there for now. Got the motor mounts in, back ones in. So, engine bay's looking good. Pretty much getting prepped ready for this. All the bolts I'm gonna, that I did reuse, I'm cleaning up on the wire wheel. But here it is, new slave cylinder installed. Got that taken care of. But that's it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. You guys, uh, you guys let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the build. You know, leave your comments, criticism, suggestions down below. Um, it's fun, it's fun. It, you know, I know it's been tying up the channel as far as, uh, you know, what I'm about, but this is what I'm about. Obviously, you know, tools, shop, business side of things. You know, it, it, I do what I like. I hope you guys like it too. Yes, I'm a Honda guy. This is, you know, now that it's starting to come together, you know, I've been, I've been wanting to get it done more and more, faster and faster. You know, I want to get this thing started up, you know, maybe even before I start worrying about the body and everything else. You know, I want to give this thing a rip, see what it's all about, maybe get it to the tune shop, get this thing squared away. I still got all the electrical to do. You know, we still got to relocate the battery, uh, make the harness, like I said, you know, and then just the odds and ends, and that's always, uh, that's always longer than you anticipate. So I want to get this in here, get the base of it done so we can move on to the next step of things. But... As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. We will check you guys in the next one. Signing out.